Welcome. Good day to everyone. Uh, welcome to Good Eat once again. My name is Oscar Stewart. I am your host of Good Eat. And I thank you all for tuning in. And let's give thanks for another day of life uh, to God Almighty. And uh, before we go into the show, I'd uh, like to make mention one minute and uh, some catastrophic e uh, events that took place last year. Last year, about the same time, uh, the country, particularly Grand Bahama and Abaco, was uh, reeling from a devastating, mind-numbing aftermath of Hurricane Dorian, which left many people in disarray. And uh, many persons here have still not fully recovered from uh, that uh, catastrophic event and their losses. And a part of this losses is tied into uh, the farming uh, industry, with, as you would imagine, agriculture on a whole. And so uh, most farmers are still struggling with uh, soil amendment, uh, the soil being stripped of nutrients and such as from all the salt water. And so with that said, uh, last week's guest, we kind of mentioned uh, replenishing and restoration of soil even as it relates to livestock and so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk here about soil amendment soil management and composting and uh our guest today uh i'm gonna refer to him as the soil doctor the soil compost guru and uh, we are very grateful to have him here very thankful uh, for our guest today. He's an international technical specialist in climate change and natural resource program at AICA headquarters. He was AICA's representative in Suriname, uh, 2013 to 2019, and in Haiti uh, between 2016, 2019. His experiences are in environmental waste management, sustainable energy production, composting, and organic farming. He's a professional agrologist with over 40 years of international research, teaching, consulting, and management experience. Dr. Abiola has a Bachelor of Science in Soil Microbiology and an MS in Environmental Micro Microbiology and a PhD in Microbial Ecology from the University of Regina, Canada. Dr. Abimbola is a leading advocate on the production and use of compost and other organic amendments for food production and remediation of degraded soil. His business and organization is affiliated Inter-American Institute for Cooperation of Agriculture. And so we're gonna just plow straight into it and bring in this man with this vast a uh, myriad of knowledge who we're going to try to just get some brief nuggets from him in the short period of time we get here. So ladies and gentlemen, please, I am grateful. I am thankful to have none other all the way from Canada, Dr. Abimbola Abiola. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Uh, once again, I am grateful. I am privileged for you being here. And, um, coming all the way from Canada here to drop us some little nuggets here in the Bahamas and by extension, the region, uh, as it relates to the soil amendment composting uh, information. And so without any delay, let me just hand it over to you. So go right ahead, Dr. Abiola. Well, my people in the Bahamas, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward as soon as the the borders are open again to be back in the Bahamas. I think uh, we are just going to talk today. Uh, thank you, Oscar, and the team at um, RBN. Uh, we are going to talk today about soil amendment and uh, how to improve soil. Yes, um, yes. And so with that, Dr. Abiola, tell us, most of all, because for me, is, composting is a big thing. It's uh, run like one of my most favorite all time topics right now. And so tell us please, why should we compost? Okay, the, I think the first thing we have to look at here is, I think what is composting? 
because I look at composting as not just putting a pile of garbage and say that it's going to rot away and you are going to get a compost. So I will quickly just tell you what composting is truly. And then we look at some of those benefits of composting, which tells us why we should compost. Composting is a biological process. What we try to do is to convert the waste to resources. It is the microorganisms that are there, that they are the ones that are doing the work. It is an aerobic process. If you pile it and it doesn't have oxygen in it, you get a very bad product. So the aerobic process is, means the presence of oxygen accelerates the rate of decomposition. You have different types of microorganisms in the process. So if somebody just gives you this one, we compost your material is not true. Nature has a way of selecting for the type of microorganisms that we do the composting process. It is, we, we, we try to accelerate the process to, by enhancing microbial population growth in the compost pile. And then how you manage it determines the type of compost that you have, the quality of compost. It's like two people, you give them the same ingredients, they produce different products at the end. So the way you manage it determines it. And all composts, they are not equal. It, your compost will be as good as the type of material you start with and how you process it. Let's quickly just look at the Bahamas first or the Caribbean generally. There are different sources of waste that you can convert into compost. Garbage is one. In the Bahamas, for example, over 121,000 tons of biodegradable organic waste goes through the municipal solid waste system into landfills. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, you have cruise ship waste, you have other yard waste, farm waste. Seaweed is a big problem in the Caribbean generally. Over 30 million tons of this waste washed up on the beaches of the Caribbean in 2018. But in addition to that, you have fissure waste, you have coconut waste, we have baggers in some areas where they have coconuts, but where they have um, sugar cane, but also, like after the impact of Dorian and Isaiah in, the, in Bahamas, you have a lot of wood waste from the trees that are fell and all that's there. So you have a large amount of material. And unfortunately, countries like the Bahamas still import compost or organic, other organic um, amendments. This compost, if we can compost it right, some of the benefits of it is that we can use it to improve soil fertility, soil fertility. It improves the physical characteristics of the soil. The soil will hold more water, plants will grow better. It buffers the pH, the acidity in the soil, you have some salinity issues from the seawater and others. It reduces the impact of that. It improves the condition of the soil, the biological condition of the soil. It also controls, we can use it to control erosion. The mulch from the compost can also be used to suppress weeds and enhance plant growth. When you look at it from the biological point of view, these compost, if you produce a good compost, will be able to, to suppress soil-borne diseases for your plants. And often the process of composting, if done right, will suppress weed seeds, We improve marketability of your compost. It will destroy all the weed seeds that's in there, as well as the pathogens that are in your compost. Now, one good thing about the process of composting is that when it is done right, all the pathogens in there, whether they are E. coli or others, it are, will be destroyed in the process. Just piling come a pile of manure will not do that. It is doing it right. And in many countries, they have actually used the process to control different types of diseases, avian flu and others. Environmentally, the composting process is one that we use to reduce, recycle, and reuse organic waste. It reduces the amount of waste going to landfill, therefore reduces the amount of money government you spend, reduces the amount of contamination of groundwater, it reduces the pollution of air, water, and soil, but then we can also use the nutrients from it for crop production. And in many cases, we can use the compost itself for environmental remediation. Thank you.
tell us please what really makes a good compost what's that uh key ingredients and all that good stuff that we can add you talked about um uh organic ways um debris from Araki and particularly here in the Bahamas so we see all those great uh those components to it that we could use to to worry but what really makes it a good compost uh versus one from the other okay um what makes a good compost is um what, let, first of all let me put it this way what you want to use it for determines what is a good compost to you yes who is a farmer especially if you are a farmer that is producing your, that you are producing your own food you are or you are more interested in the attributes of the compost that gives it the nutrients and other things what makes a good compost includes but it's not limited to this and we could talk about other things later one is the consistency of the material that you have produced um the other is that you should have no odor or as i have said say it has no odor i would say it have no smell but no odor no mild odor compost normally has the typical uh smell or like when you are in the woods mm -hmm. uh, a good compost will have no weeds in it it should also have no sharp materials bottles or you don't want a needle in it it must have enough nutrients to meet the needs of what you want to use it for it must have ability to hold more water so when you add it to soil it retains the moisture in the soil but it also be able to make the soil porous soils that are very dense that don't allow water to go through it like clay soil when you have the material to it it actually enhances porosity but also in terms of the way your plants react it must also be able to suppress diseases and it should have no toxins that will prevent your plants from growing. Mm, very good. Okay, so Dr. Aviola, that's very good. Um, I know for me, myself, who, like I said, love composting. So for everybody uh, watching, there you have it. In simple layman terms, uh, one person garbage can literally become somebody else's treasure. You take all that food waste, and if you're farming, if you're gardening, use it to make a uh, compost, um, save the country money, save the government money, and as it relates to uh, having to dispose of so much waste. And just briefly tell us about that lasagna technique. You're familiar with that? I'm well sure the compost it. Well, first of all, let me let me. I will, I will first of all quickly just go back into letting you know some of the people or that use the compost. Okay. So the users of compost are organic, we use it more in a lot of organic production. I yes. just use banana, for example, here. Okay. Um, and any other type of things. And I know a lot of. Um, even greenhouses now in the Bahamas that are using compost or other compost materials for production. Fruit and vegetables, container and mix, and potting soils and others. Uh, nursery beds, they can be also be used for erosion control, for trees and shrubs, for turf establishment, for reclamation of impacted environment, and a host lot of other things. When we want you to look at the, ex, the situation of the, um, when I look at it in terms of what can be composted, and we will talk next in our next session on how to do it right. Yes, okay. I will talk about things that can be composted quickly. Things that can be composted are basically plant materials, everything from leaves, stems, to even if you have the stems and it can be chopped out properly, or yard waste, food waste, some, in, um, some um, food processing waste, waste from even garbage, animal manure, and others. Things that are 
they are far from living materials, but you cannot put things like plastic and others into it. No glass, okay? Things that are synthetic materials don't normally break down well. The other thing is the fact that when you want to compost, the type of the composting system that you are going to use will depend on even the organic material you can put in, for example. You cannot, when you are doing it only on a small scale in the backyard, put materials that can have pathogens in there because your small composting beam may not be big enough. So we'll talk more about actually the intricacies of composting later in the coming year, in the coming uh, shows. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Abiola. We definitely will have to do a follow-up because there's so much information uh, there to be heard and uh, surely that so many that you want to share with us. And so before we uh, let you go, Dr. Abiola, as it relates to this composting, for particularly for those doing uh, backyard farming, what one tip would you give them when it comes to composting? Well, I, before I talk about even the tip, I would even say that uh, when we are looking at the benefits of compost, something we didn't really talk too much about for us that is good for the farmer is the fact that composting saves money and it can make money. Um, the economic benefit of composting is enough to make a farmer, a community, a government to turn this waste that is currently in many situations that is a problem and turn them into an asset. To compost properly, you have to be, there are four basic things and we're going to detail about that. The, the, the proportion of the green material to brown materials in your compost is important. <laughs> yeah. Secondly, enough moisture, water should be there, is important. Fourthly, it must be aerated enough. There must be oxygen going in there. Air must be able to flow through it properly. And I would say, fourthly, the particles don't have to be big. You can't put a big log of wood that is three or four inches in diameter and think that it's going to break down. So, and the more the diversity of materials that you have in your, in your, in your power or your mix, organic material, the better the quality of the compost that you are going to get at the end. Thank you, Dr. Abiola. Uh, we sure appreciate that. So to everyone listening, uh, there you have it. You have your, your green matter or your dry material water and uh, aeration. And so those are the key. And we want to take in consideration what it is that we are composting for, uh, where we intend to use that compost to uh, maximize and utilize the best from it. And so Dr. Abiola, surely uh, we'll be having you back return again for the follow-up. And so to everybody tuning in, uh, we want you to look out for that. Uh, stay tuned in here. At uh, Good Eats and RBN to get some more of this uh, good uh, food here that Dr. Abiola shared. That's uh, brain food, as I like to call it. And uh, Dr. Abiola, once again, we thank you very much. I, I am truly grateful for you being here. I appreciate it very much. Ladies and gentlemen, coming all the way from Canada, uh, joining us, Dr. Abimbola Abiola. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to being back in the Bahamas. Hopefully in the coming weeks, we are going to have a series of workshops, in Boy, especially in Grand Bahama, Abaco, Elutra, and some of the other islands. I'm sure we'll all be looking forward to that. And uh, I'll look forward to receiving more information from you uh, as it relates to that as well. So we could share that information on our social media sites. Uh, Facebook page, and I'm sure they could go to uh, Aika's Facebook page, I am presuming, to uh, yeah. get more detailed information as it relates to the workshop coming here uh, to Grand Bahama, particularly and the Bahamas. Thank you very much, Dr. Abiola. Once again, you have a great day, uh, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Yes, sir.
And so, people, we come to that uh, segment once again. But before we go into that, I just want to say thanks, everyone, for tuning in again. Um, good stuff there at Soil Composting Information. And uh, we know that's important for everyone. Remember, you could turn that garbage into some treasure. So many different things you could do with the waste composting makes it retaining soil, mulching, etc. But now. Folks, we're back to what's in my cup for the day. And so today we're going to be telling everyone once again, chime in on the YouTube channel, leave your responses in the comment section as it relates to what you could guess what's going on in the cup. My color today is green, so think green. Uh, we got a veggie, fruit, and one or two other key ingredients. So Give it a go. See if you can get the correct response and see what you can win. Don't be surprised. Anybody out there, once again, tuning in and want to leave some recipes, some green recipes, trade recipes, uh, go to the Facebook page, RBN TV, YouTube, RBN TV Studios. And let's see what we could do. So we want to get one to wrap this show by thanking uh, Dr. Abimbola, Abiola once again. Uh, the soil doctor, as they say in the Bahamas. Some people say he's the soil daddy. That's the terminology we use here. And so we thank everybody once again for tuning in and appreciate it once again. And come back again next week. We're still here. We're still chiming. We're still going on. Hurricane and all. COVID-19 and all. And thank you once again, everybody, on behalf of myself and our BN TV family. Have a good weekend. There is a point of